Hey folks, Corey here with Fist of Stone Wargaming. Welcome back to the Stone Path. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted up these Trader Guard from Blackstone Fortress using contrast paints, and then went back, picked out a few details to really make them stand out. Starting out, you're going to want to get the workstation all set up. Got the Trader Guard ready to go. They're all primed up in the Wraithbone spray undercoat, doing a batch paint of seven of the models. Blackstone Fortress comes with two squads of seven identical sculpts. I've already painted the first seven models before. I took notes on how I painted them, which is a very good idea to do. And now I'm repeating the process for the second set of seven, so they're going to match. Also got the paints all set up, and you might be looking at this saying, but there's only six paints on the table. He said seven paints in the title. And that's because I wasn't really thinking about the title of the video when I started painting these minis and just started recording. So it's going to be seven. You'll see that one very shortly. The key to painting these contrast paints is that you paint from the lighter colors to the darker colors because the darker colors then end up covering over any of the mistakes you've made with the lighter colors. So I'm going to work as these are laid out left to right from lightest to darkest. And then, of course, the seventh paint, Black Templar. That'll be done at the end because it is the darkest. So let's grab the Agarist Dunes and let's get started. I'm going to use this paint for the coat of the model. As this is the first paint going down, you don't have to be super neat. You want to get it all over the coat. Make sure you're hiding all the white areas of the coat. Each of these sculpts has different amounts of the coat on them. Just make sure you're looking for arms, spots on the chest or the stomach that might be visible, the back of the neck, and then of course anything that's on the lower torso that might be hanging down and around. I'm probably being a little bit more careful here than I need to be, but uh, that's just kind of the way I paint. Next up, we're going to paint all the exposed skin using Gilliman Flesh. Most of these guys have their hands exposed. Some of them also have uh, parts of their face exposed. Some of it's just a little bit of the face. Some of it's more of the face. Again, don't need to be really neat here. You can see with this guy, this grenadier guy, that I'm just basically covering the entire grenade in the flesh tone. We'll cover that up later. Moving on to the third color, which is Basilicanum Gray. I'm going to use this for all of the pants, the trousers for these guys, and also for any gray cloaks that you may want to pick out. I find it's a very nice, uh, dirty tone for the cloaks to be able to seem like they're dark and grim dark in the 40k universe. This particular guy's got a pretty long, flowy one, so it's a good example to show how the contrast paints move around as you paint it in the model. As always with these contrast paints, make sure you keep an eye on any pooling as you go through and move from model to model. You don't want to leave one of these models with a very dark stain of paint. As we're moving into some of the slightly darker colors, make sure you're careful around the areas where you've already painted. On to paint number four, which is Skeleton Horde. I'm going to use this for any of the wraps or cloth that needs to be in kind of a off-whitish color. This Skeleton Horde paint is one of the most popular amongst the contrast line. I'm using it here just to pick out a few details. Again, be cautious if you're right in the immediate area of something that you've already painted. You don't want to bleed this color into some of the other locations. And of course, don't forget the skulls on the sergeant. Fifth paint here is going to be Snake Bite Leather. This is going to be for all of the stock for all the guns. This is actually a nice pop of color that picks things right out. Instead of giving the whole metallic look, you can see right on this flamer how it really picks out almost a wood grain. I played with this paint in the first batch of models that I did, and I found it to be very, very convincing for a wood grain effect. On to paint number six, which is the Dark Brown Wildwood. I'm going to use this on all the fur and all of the leather that I want to be brown on the minis. 
This would be things like any pouches, belts, straps, cases. Uh, in the case of this particular guy, it's going to be also the uh, scabbard or the sheath for his knife. This is a nice deep brown color. It covers up well. You're going to use it to cover any mistakes you made before or where you were moving quickly. But be very careful not to get it on anything that you've already painted. Because now you're going to really start covering up those previous colors and have to go in and make corrections. And last but not least, Black Templar. This paint is very, very good. This is going to go on all of the armor. The boots, the gun casings uh, that I left as white, and any of the things that are going to be metallic. This is a nice, quick, and easy step. And if you're just painting to this contrast level... After you're done with this step, nothing on the model should be white. As this is the last color, you want to be extremely careful here and not get any of it on any of the previous colors because it will cover any of them. And you can see there's quite a bit here. And once all that's done, you have a completed model. But we can take it a step further. So if you want to do a little bit more and make these models really pop out on the Blackstone Vultures board or if you're using them in Warhammer 40k or Kill Team, you can take a look at the paints that I've got out here. That's what I'm going to be using to really pop out some details. I'm going to use some true metallics to pick out some of the metal areas to give those a little bit of a sheen. I'm going to use the brown colors to help accentuate the fur. And I'm going to use the reds and the white to give a splash of color to kind of add a little visual interest to the model. So the first step, you notice in the previous phase I had left his mask white, his little cloth covering. I'm going to paint this red with Blood Angels Red. If you didn't want to take this step, you could have painted it either in gray or in the Skeleton Horde, the Basilicanum Gray or Skeleton Horde colors. Those colors would have been just fine here, but I wanted to give this guy a little bit of an extra pop. The Apothecary White now, I'm going to use this on the right over the Wraithbone White for the Sergeant. This will give his face mask a bit of a recess shade, so it really stands out well. Moving on to the fur details, I'm using Deathclaw Brown just on this model on the underside of the fur to give it some kind of a uh, skin-like effect on the underside that you would get on a fur. If you didn't want to do this step, you could just cover that area that I left white with the wildwood from the first half of the video. And also on the fur, I'm going to use Bane Blade Brown. This gives a nice texture and highlight effect. I think it's worth a few extra minutes for that. And then moving on to the metallics, I'm using Rune Fang Steel for my silver areas. I'm kind of using a light overbrush type technique. I'm trying not to fully layer this paint on, I'll leave the recesses dark. Move the brush around, keep it loaded up very lightly. That way we can take advantage of the paints that we've already put on there with that Black Templar. And then anything that I think is going to be silver. So for this particular model, the little uh, knee pad there. And I'm also going to paint some silver onto the gun barrel and onto the knife. A couple of the other locations I'm going to paint some silver too as well are all the spikes. The spikes that are sticking up off the shoulders. There's a couple of them on some of the knee pads on some of the boots. Those spikes really make... Uh, it really pop out if you take this little extra step to pick them out. Moving on to Balthazar Gold next, just to pick out some of the chaos symbols. Again, just for a different splotch of color. I'm also going to use this to do a light overbrush on the edge of the flamer. Kind of give it a scorched appearance as if it's been used a little bit recently. And I'm just going to pick out a detail here on the sergeant's sword. Really, any other detail that you think you might want to see as a gold metallic instead of a silver metallic. Just to give a little bit of visual interest. Once the metallics were done, I gave a quick wash with non-oil, but I had a little bit of camera difficulty, so I don't have that step recorded. Once that's dry, I moved on to another dry brush step using Necron Compound to just give a light dry brush over all the metallic areas to give it a little bit of a pop. Be gentle with this dry brush. You just want to apply a little bit in moderation. 
Now you can make a couple of quick passes if you want to build up a little bit more color. But you don't want to get it onto other areas of the model that you've already painted. Uh, it will ruin it very, very quickly. Once the dry brushing is complete, base the models and the scheme that you'd like to use for your Blackstone Fortress minis. You can check out my basing video on how I base these in the card at the top of the screen. Since these minis are going to be heavily used in the game, I give them a good solid coat of dull coat and then use the spritz zone red for the eye sockets on the three models with masks. It takes a couple of seconds to just dot that in, but you do it after you've done the dull coat so that you get the finished glossy effect. I had a lot of fun painting up these guys. The contrast paints got a great result with a very little bit of effort and very little time. And then taking a few extra minutes on each model to pick out the details and when they make them pop is worth it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you want to see some more content, check out the links that are on the screen right now. And please subscribe down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.